Chapter 123 is here, and we get the continuation of the huge moment that happened last chapter. Of course, as many of you probably know, if you saw the leaks, you also get a hint of something a bit spicy. But I'll talk more about that later on in the chapter. The chapter starts off with Ruby crying that Aqua is the doctor and calling him sensei while hugging him tightly. Meanwhile, Aqua is just watching her with his black star and gun. Ruby is still in shock as she comes to realize that Goro has always been there for her, as Serena and now as Ruby. Yet, she wonders if Goro was so close, why didn't he say anything? Aqua responds by saying he wasn't completely sure and didn't have an idea until a little while ago. Which I'm glad that's the case cause I felt like Aqua already knowing she was Serena beforehand would have killed the hype a bit and made it seem like he really does know everything. Ruby continues on saying that she hoped by restarting Bikomachi, Goro would find her through that. She was always looking for Goro in the crowds at every event and always did her best, believing he was watching. However, as time went on, Ruby began to think that Goro had long since forgotten about Bikomachi and I. She felt like there was a chance Goro might never find her. Even when Ruby contacted the hospital, they said he had disappeared. She even alludes to Aqua that she had found his dead body. Of course, Aqua knows that. It was all a part of his plan, but Aqua tells her he's sorry for making her go through that. Ruby even says that after Aqua revealed their secret of being Ai's children to the world, she felt like she had no one she could trust. However, Aqua tells her that this is all going according to plan. That the reveal of being Ai's children, the 15 year old Lai movie, everything he had done up to that point has all been for the sake of revenge. He will never forget about Ai. In order to deal with losing Ai and Goro and get revenge, Ruby felt like she did a lot of terrible things and told a lot of lies. We saw some of the dark side of Ruby when she was on Dig Deep, which I covered in this video here. Each time Ruby lied or did something questionable for revenge, her heart would ache in pain. With each lie she told, Ruby felt like she was moving down a path she didn't want to go. The dark path of revenge Aqua is currently on. Aqua appears saddened by this and tells Ruby that this life of revenge isn't for her. Ruby tries to counter by saying I said being an idol is a lie. But Aqua stops her with a head pat and says that I and her are two different people. Ruby should live her own life and he tells her that she doesn't need to lie anymore before going in for the hug. Of course, this causes Ruby to break down all her feelings to Aqua. How she wanted to lie like I and it was tough having to live up to her standards like always having to smile. She always had unpleasant thoughts in the back of her head and could even see the face of the person who killed I in the crowd sometimes. Ruby then asked Aqua if it's really okay. Is she good enough just as she is? And like Goro once told Serena so long ago, he would support her as a fan. To him, someone like Serena, who could persevere through the horrible circumstance she was in, and yet still continue to dream so sincerely with her sparkling star eyes. To him, Serena shined brighter than even I. And hearing that causes Ruby's double black star and gone to finally disappear. Whether or not it's gone for good, We'll see. I do think it'll reappear if she sees Hikaru or thinks about revenge, since the eyes seem to shift based on their mental states, which could explain why they shifted back to white now. Ruby is free of revenge now, just like Aqua once was. Of course, that time ended up being a huge mistake for Aqua. I'd say hopefully things can be different this time, but you know who's watching them? The Crow Girl. She uses a crow to spy on the twins, literally Itachi style. Like the crow girl is completely surrounded by crows, and she says that this is great for the movie. Ruby will now bounce back from this better than ever, and the movie will be made according to Aqua's terms. With this performance as a stepping stone, Ruby's career trajectory might skyrocket. But you know what? 
the crow girl calls it a bad move. That's crazy. And I'm not even gonna lie, Akko looks pretty cool here. And it even looks like he knows that this might have been a bad play. She says that he doesn't understand and that this is a clear failure due to his naivety. The crow girl even says that Aqua is not the vengeful type and it would have been easier for Aqua if Ruby continued to hate him. Like bruh, my first thought when I saw this is literally what if Hikaru decides to target Ruby now once her career takes off. Aqua might have just put a target on Ruby's back and he doesn't even know. Ruby has the potential to be a star that surpasses even the likes of I now that she's free. And you know what that sounds like? The perfect target for Hikaru. That'll be insane if Hikaru goes after Ruby, his own daughter. Also, I thought it was funny how the Crow Girl is just watching everything like it's a game. A game of the gods. Like, I'm really confident now that she's some sort of spirit now. She knows way too much to be just some random girl or just another reincarnate. Moving on though, after Ruby refreshes herself, she comes and tells Aqua she trusts him. Just like she did in the flash forward interview. Like literally, that interview could happen next chapter and it would fit in perfectly with how much Ruby trusts him now. So yeah, here's the part everyone's been going crazy for. Ruby never forgot about Goro's promise back then. Goro told Serena that he will marry her when she turned 16, which is still sus as fuck considering their age difference at the time. But Serena was only like 8 at the time, so it's excusable. But now, the chapter ends with Ruby specifically reminding Aqua that she's already past 16. Which could only mean one thing. Ruby still wants to marry Goro. And I say Goro because I think she might just be seeing Goro in Aqua now. It's something that she'll probably have to get over because if Ruby was in her right mind, she'd know that's wrong because Aqua is literally her blood related sibling. I'm really sorry to the Aqua X Ruby shippers but I really think Aqua is just trolling. I bet Aqua will remind Ruby that can't happen anymore because they're blood related. Not only that, but their careers would be ruined if they did get together. Like, if you think about it, we never saw Aqua and Ruby completely disassociate themselves from their past lives. That might be the next step in their character development and this moment was the perfect segue into that. Ruby will realize that she's not Serena. She's been granted a second chance at life and she'll live it freely without dwelling over her past. Aqua also needs to realize the same thing, but I think it's gonna be harder for him because he did become free for a bit, but then got dragged back into the darkness. Aqua has another chance at life and a chance to watch over Serena as he promised, but the only thing that will hold him back from that is revenge. If Aqua can get over revenge, then he'll be free. But I don't think that's gonna happen. At least, not anytime soon. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the chapter. I know everyone was freaking out about Ruby x Aqua stealing a win. But I'm pretty sure Aka is just baiting everyone. Let me know what y'all think in the comments though. Are Ruby and Aqua actually gonna end up together? Is Ruby gonna be Hikaru's next target? Let me know and thank you for watching the video. Please consider dropping a like and I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe as well. If you want some more Oshinoko content, I got some over here too. Peace.